Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, uh, it's going to be more of a laid back episode, kind of similar to the Dell laptop restore that we did recently. Because today we're going to be taking a look at what we've got in front of us today. This is my hardware bin. Now I was working on a larger project for the channel recently and I just was in here looking for some stuff and when I was doing that I realized, you know, I never made a video on this. I've done videos on my software collection that was like a couple of years ago and more recently i did a floppy disk collection video where i showed you guys all the various floppy disks that i've accumulated over the years well we're going to do that same thing today just with computer parts so these are all of the parts at least most of them that are not in a computer currently obviously you guys probably know i've got a lot of computers we've featured a lot of them on this channel but uh, I have collected a lot of computer parts over the years, things that were given to me, parts that I've purchased, parts that I've taken out of my own computers. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna kind of go through this and for some of the more interesting items, I'll kind of give a brief uh, description of where I got it from and uh, why it's, you know, why I think it's interesting. So we're gonna start off with this right here. So this is one of the only parts I have left to my very, very first laptop. That was a KDS computer. You guys probably don't even know what that company is, but it was a computer manufacturer, I believe a pretty low-end computer manufacturer back in the uh, 90s. I think they went defunct in the early to mid 2000s. But anyway, this was my very first laptop. It ran Windows Me, as you can probably tell from the product key sticker right here. That's one of the reasons why I've kept it. And uh, this was originally my dad's laptop and he gave it to me when he got a new machine. And when I got a new laptop for Christmas one year, uh, I ended up taking this one apart. And uh, I kind of regret doing this a little bit, but in my mind, I didn't really have any use for it and I wanted to teach myself a bit more about computers. I had never taken apart a laptop before. I had kind of maybe seen the inside of a desktop computer, but I'd never done anything with a laptop other than using it. I've never taken it apart, never upgraded the RAM, nothing. So I just took it apart. I didn't really look for any manuals or ask for any help. I just took a screwdriver, started unscrewing things. Obviously it was powered off, everything was safe. But um, yeah, I just went in and just, you know, opened it up and started, I mean, I, I basically took all the parts out because I didn't really have, like I said, I didn't really have a use for it. There was also a problem with the screen um, and that was, uh, there was like a line that ran down the screen. I think that the display panel itself was bad. So, uh, and like I said, I had a new laptop, so, in my mind, there was really no point in keeping this, though it would be pretty cool to look at this today, but maybe if I had known that YouTube was gonna be a reality for me, you know, being a YouTuber, maybe I would have kept it, but nevertheless, this is one of the only parts that I have left for it, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. Next up, we've got, uh, this is another case piece. This came from a Dell Dimension 8400. This was my parents' computer. They had upgraded from an eMachines, uh, which they then gave to me, uh, and that was my my second desktop machine, I believe. Uh, so yeah, and that was like a it was a early 2000s e machine that ran like Windows XP, obviously. And uh, yeah, that was my I I use that thing all the time. Well, this was what they bought to upgrade from that machine, and uh, eventually. So if you're familiar with these era Dell machines. Um, this would be a piece uh, that would go on the bottom. I actually have a, let me go and grab something. Okay, this right, gosh, this thing is heavy. This is an Optiplex GX280. It was given to me by my aunt recently. Uh, so this, uh, this is the piece I'm talking about right here, this front piece. That's what this came from. Uh, this one is a little bit different. This, again, went to a Dimension 8400. Uh, but this would typically reveal, like, under here, there are two USB ports and a headphone jack. So what had happened is, uh, these two plastic arms that would hold this piece on, on this one, uh, broke off basically to where this would not close properly, so it would always stick out like this and be very wobbly. So this just got taken off of there. And, uh, or it would just kind of stick out like this. I think it stuck out like this for a while, then it just broke off completely or it was taken off. Uh, so I've just, you know, I've just kept it ever since and over the years it has found its way into uh, my hardware bin right here. So yeah, it's a little story behind, <laughs> I know, I've talked about two plastic pieces so far. Let's just get into the hardware. So over here we've got a couple of anti-static bags. Uh, these are always good to have. I think I've gotten these from, I mean, some of these have come from like eBay purchases that I've made because typically sellers will send out uh, certain computer parts in anti-static bags. 
Uh, this right here is actually a viewer donation. Uh, I've gotten a lot of viewer donations this year, more than I think well, every other year combined. So uh, thank you to all of you who have sent out stuff. They, it's really helped uh, make content for this channel. Uh, unfortunately, not every donation immediately goes into a video. Uh, very few. I mean, most of them, when I get them, I instantly do do something with them because I, I usually, whenever somebody asks me about something, they'll sometimes see a video and I'll say something that I've been looking for and they will say, oh, I, I mean, I've, I've even had some people message me and say, I found this eBay listing of this that happened with the 98 PC speakers recently. I bought those on eBay, but a, a viewer made me aware of them. Yeah, this right here is a card that I was really wanting to do a video on. This is a graphics card. It's an AGP card, specifically an NVIDIA GeForce 2 MX. Now, this was sent to me by a viewer to put in the 98 PC. Unfortunately, the 98 PC does not have any AGP slots, only PCI. Uh, not PCI Express, just standard PCI. This computer is from 2000. So, uh, yeah, so this has sat in here. I actually asked him if he wanted it back, and he just said, no, just keep it, you know, because you might do a video on it later, and that's definitely true. This could absolutely end up in a video at some point. He also sent me a motherboard and a sound card. The sound card is actually in the 98 PC right now. I believe I mentioned that in a video um, probably a couple months ago. But uh, the motherboard unfortunately did not fit in it. I was actually going to try and when I found out that this card was AGP and it wouldn't fit in the PC because there's no AGP slots. I was going to put that motherboard into it that had AGP slots and then use this card. Unfortunately, it's an ATX motherboard, and uh, this is a micro ATX uh, style case and only fits a micro ATX motherboard, so it won't fit. Yeah, like I said, he just said keep the parts and you might use them in a future video, so thank you very much again. And right here, I guess we can just get this out of the way. This is my bag of screws and uh, zip ties and all sorts of other things. I really just have this one spot that I keep everything in. There's a PC speaker in here as well that came with, uh, I think, uh, actually this was from my old computer case, uh, which I don't have anymore. I think I sold that, um, but uh, I just kept the <laughs> PC speaker from it. But yeah, all sorts of different screws in here. Um, I think this purple piece here is actually to that KDS laptop. Uh, I think it was just a piece of plastic that was thrown in this bag at some point. This right here is in here because I don't really have any other place for it right now, but this is the manual for the Macintosh PowerBook 190CS that I did a video on in 2019. Uh, it was actually my second sponsored video ever, which was pretty cool. So uh, yeah, so this this came with it. I bought that at a thrift store for like 40 bucks and it came, it surprisingly came with everything. It came with the computer, the manual, and the uh, power supply or the yeah power brick. Uh, or charger, I guess I should say, and it was in like really, really good condition, so that was just super awesome, but yeah, I've uh, kept the manual, obviously not going to get rid of this, but uh, here it is. This right here is a purchase, uh, another purchase that I made specifically for video purposes. This was a part for the 98 PC, a DVD drive, an IDE DVD drive, because, uh, well, that's what you have to do unless you want to get an IDE to SATA adapter. Uh, I've mentioned before, I mean, I bought this on eBay used. Uh, th this was bought used, this was not new or anything, obviously the thing's pretty old. I've mentioned I've had a couple problems with this. Uh, there's this issue where the drive will, uh, if it's if I'm like installing something, uh, it, it will read the disk totally fine for a little while, and then at some point it'll just stop reading it. And I, I think it's, it's mainly when it's inactive, like if I have a disk in, and uh, it finishes installing something and I just leave it idle and then I try to read stuff off that disk. I will have to eject it and then put it back in for it to continue to read. And I've even had it during like operating system installs where it will just stop reading like mid install and the installer will ask me to like put back in the disk because it thinks that I removed it so I have to eject it and put it back in. And uh, more recently I've had more problems where I think I was installing like Android x86 on this for a project that never came to fruition unfortunately, but uh, it was not getting through the installer at all. So I just put back in the old drive and it's been in there ever since. So this is here because I've mainly been doing projects with the CD drive, uh, but if I ever have to use a DVD I'll just try this again, but I really have to get a, uh, a new drive. So yeah, that's why this is in here. So next up we're going to be getting into some CPUs. So this right here is my little CPU box uh, and I've got two CPUs in here. One of these is a, I believe this is a Pentium. Yeah, this is a Pentium 4 and this is, uh, is this another Pentium 4? Yeah, it is. I've got two Pentium 4s in here. Uh, so these came from 
I honestly, I think one of them came from an HP machine, and one of them came from something else, I don't remember. And then these are uh, older style CPUs that are pretty cool. We've got a, uh, this is a Pentium 3 right here, and this right here is an AMD uh, CPU. So there you go, assembled in Malaysia. So yeah, I've just had these in here, I have not had a use for them. Uh, in like any other computers, but I've just kept them in this little box so they stay uh, safe and secure So yeah, there you go. We'll set those aside and right here is my giant box of memory Maybe it's not so large, but uh, there's a decent amount of RAM in here So this I got actually at a garage sale many years ago For five bucks. Yeah, I was really surprised when I saw it too And uh, I have added more memory to it over the years. I'm not gonna go through everything in here There's all sorts of types of uh, memory uh, this here is, you know, some laptop RAM or some, you know, mini uh, DIMMs here that are typically used in laptops, but also in Macs, like I think the Mac Mini uses these. Um, don't remember where these came from, I think these are a recent addition. Uh, you've got, you know, standard size DIMMs here. Uh, this came from, a, I think, my old MacBook Pro, actually. That's why it says MacBook Pro on it. And yeah, I've, I'm have i not really going to go through this entire thing. Right here, we have my uh, collection of hard drives. Yeah, so these are, they're only laptop hard drives. I can show you here. Uh, there's four of them in here. One of these is dead, actually. Honestly, I should do like a data recovery video or something, because I think one of these, yeah, one of these works. One of them is dead. I don't know why I still have that one in here. One of them is not tested, one of them is on the verge of failing. So uh, I just have those in here, I've got like post-it notes on them and everything. Set those back in here. And yeah guys, uh, like with pretty much every other video on this channel, if you see something that piques your interest that you want to see in a future video, uh, be sure to let me know. Uh, right here underneath the power supplies, unfortunately this kind of got stuck under there. A little bit damaged here as you can see, which is unfortunate. Uh, this came out of an old Dell laptop, but this here, I mean, this is not like, this is not like an Ethernet jack on the end of this here. You would need another part to, you know, use this with, but this is a Ethernet card, which is pretty neat. So, we'll set that aside. I've got another one of those in here somewhere. Uh, this right here, this is actually a uh, bag of 100 uh, Ethernet jackets. I got these because I was terminating some Cat5 lines in my house and I needed just a bag. I mean, I really only needed like three uh, connectors, but the, I mean, Monoprice had this 100 pack for I think five or seven dollars or something. It was like the cheapest thing they had, so I just got it. And uh, you never know, maybe I'll need these uh, at a later date. Uh, so yeah, just have those in here. I'll set that aside. Right here we have a just a metal bracket that came out of a desktop computer at some point. Yeah, there's going to be lots of you know random things in here. Like this here is what this is a uh, a set of case screws. I think this might have been for my old uh, for my old case. Uh, I used to use a Rosewill case on my previous PC build uh, than the one I'm using now, which uses a Fantex case. This right here uh, is a drive module for, uh, I think this would actually work in the Dell Latitude D610. It has a removable uh, disk drive that you can just pop out with this here and just pull it out. Uh, so this could work in there maybe if that drive fails, but uh, this came from somewhere. And uh, yeah, pretty neat. So I'll just set that over here for now. And these here were from that other Dell machine that I ended up getting rid of. Uh, this is a this is also from a Dell Latitude. This is a older Dell Latitude, and it basically had the same thing. It had a removable disk drive that you could swap out for a uh, floppy drive if you wanted to. So you would have like say you used uh, CDs more than you used floppy disks. You would have this in there, and then if you were traveling, you could carry this along with you. So you would connect uh, this right here to the back so there's these two uh, tabs on the side or these, these push buttons so you would just push it in and then you would plug this into your laptop and this basically acts as a external drive base so you could have the floppy disk drive in here or if you wanted to take it out you could uh, pop it out you could put in the CD drive and then uh, you could put the floppy disk drive in your computer uh, so you wouldn't have to, you know, use it with this. So yeah, it's uh, one of those neat things that Dell did uh, back in the day, and then it eventually evolved into this, which is much, uh, much slimmer, as you can see, for the Dell Latitude, uh, or the Dell Latitudes that ran XP. Um, right here, this is a partly a viewer donation. Uh, this was sent out to me by Austin, uh, who sent me the CPU for the 98 PC. We'll just get these power supplies out of the way. So this right here came from an HP computer. This is a 300 watt, as I have written right here. And this one 
right here. This is, I think it's a 250 watt. Yeah, 250 watt power supply. Uh, this is uh, a light on, you know, it's some like OEM part uh, that came from a, honestly don't know where it came from, but uh, yeah, I just have it in here because you know, you never know when you're gonna need a power supply. And that really goes for anything in here. That's why that I have these parts because you never really know when you're going to need a graphics card, a power supply, a cooler or you know, whatever. Uh, so this right here, this is actually, I think, one of the other only parts that I have uh, that came out of that KDS machine. This is the heat sink uh, that would go over the uh, processor right here. So yeah, I just kept that along with the case. All right, so let's change it up a bit, shall we? I've moved the camera down because all this other stuff we're going to be taking a look at are... Uh a little bit smaller, you know, smaller parts. I thought it would just look better if we had the camera up closer. So this right here is another heat sink that's kind of attached to it, to this card here. Uh, this is, yeah, this is a, a heat sink, I believe for an AMD CPU. Uh, this went with a uh, with one of the computers that I parted out and I got that AMD uh, CPU that was in this box right here. So uh, yeah, that's where that came from. Uh, I've got one more cooler right here. Uh, actually, these are some fans. We'll just get into those in a moment because I want to take all this stuff off of here first. This here is another graphics card. Uh, this is another AGP card. Yeah, I just have had this because uh, I don't really have any use for it at the moment. Uh, this came out of, I think it came out of the same computer that this was in. So uh, yeah, we'll set that aside. Here we have something that I bought that I ended up never using because it didn't work for what I needed it for. Uh, there was a while back in, I want to say 2015, 2016 time frame where I was really wanting to get a capture card because I had been doing lots of videos on my older computers. And, uh, you know, I was always having to put the monitor just in front of the camera and record it that way. So I wanted to get a capture card. I bought this from a guy on eBay. This was apparently a DVI capture card but uh it ended up not working so <laughs> which was really annoying i don't really know what this i mean it was advertised as a dvi capture card there was no information on who made it and i just bought it on that basis here's the i guess the manufacturer right here analog devices so uh yeah i've just had this in here ever since with no use for it because uh i don't really i mean i think that the atmosphere the the style that i do these these videos in now where i've got the camera behind the monitor and you know you kind of have the the setup around me with the wooden table which is actually not wood by the way i've kind of fooled you guys with that uh it's just one of those giant stickers over the table i've probably yeah immersion ruined i'm sorry but um i think it gives more of a homey atmosphere uh you know for these videos i've gotten no complaints about it so i've just kept doing it and uh I've not really needed a capture card for any of these videos because I just use my camera. So, uh, yeah, right here, uh, this is a modem uh, card. You can see, let me just bring it up to the camera right here. Uh, here it is. You've got uh, two RJ11 jacks on, on there. So, yeah, we'll set that aside. And right here we have another modem. So, uh, yeah, pretty neat. I got two modem cards. So this right here uh, was a heat sink. Oh, I think the screw is actually kind of screwed into the, because uh, this is like a wire mesh uh bottom here but uh but this is uh i believe this was upgraded this is a um arctic cooler um cpu cooler that uh was in a computer that i ended up taking apart i also kept a couple of uh io shields for <laughs> for some motherboards uh i you know i just kept these you know because they were small they didn't really take up much space uh obviously these only go to a specific motherboard which i still have somewhere just not in here and uh, yeah, so I've just, I've kept them. And these are OEM shields, as you can probably tell just from the way they are uh, designed there. So uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, set them aside. Here's that other network card I was talking about. This one is a 56K global modem PC card by 3Com. Uh, this one is not Dell branded like this other one over here. This one is an Ethernet card again. We've got a lot of fans back here. We got three of them, I believe. Uh, so these came, these are just, you know, standard Let's get this card out of the way here. Uh, these are just standard PC fans. Right here, we've got another, uh, what is this? Is this a, this is a FireWire card. Yep, IEEE 1394. So this is a FireWire card from something. Oh, you know what? I think this was probably from one of my old HP machines. I think I needed a FireWire card and I ended up getting this. We've also got, it looks like another uh, metal bracket right here. We've got an Allen wrench for, that went to something. We have another, uh, this is another CPU cooler. We've got two, uh, these are actually pretty useful. I used to use these a lot. These are Natopia 
uh, 3D Reach, uh, 802.11G, uh, B and G, wireless cards for laptops. These are uh, PCM, CIA uh, wireless cards. So uh, yeah, these would, I used this in that KDS laptop. Uh, this is how I would get online. I would slide this into the PCM, CIA card slot. And uh, yeah, I've got two of them. Uh, so uh, yeah, they definitely, these are really, really useful for laptops. I've got some more uh, Molex uh, cables here. So there you go. Right here, oh, and here's a <laughs> tube of uh, Arctic Silver. I think this was given to me by Austin. And I just have it in here because uh, it's it's where his uh, his his CPUs are that, that he gave me. Uh, but yeah, this is a you know tube of Arctic Silver thermal paste. Definitely always got to have one of those lying around. This is my uh, this is actually my old card reader for an HP machine that I used to own. And uh, that thing was, I actually upgraded from that to a, a computer that I built. So I ended up taking most of the parts out of it and transferring things like the hard drive. And uh, I think I, yeah, I think I kept the RAM because I think the motherboard I got could support the RAM. Uh, so yeah, you know, I just took out some of the parts and I didn't really have any use for, I mean, I sold basically everything that I didn't need. This I kept because I don't think it was worth a whole lot on eBay and it was kind of a very specific type of uh, SD card reader because of the way this was mounted in the case. Um, but this is an HP card reader. It could read uh, SD cards, uh, CF cards, and yeah, all sorts of stuff. This is uh, what I would use to transfer footage over to that computer uh, from my camera. So uh, yeah, we'll set that here. And last but not least, this thing, which is an audio amp card, according to that right there, revision A. Don't know who manufactured this. Uh, I think this was in one of those pre-built machines that I was talking about. And uh, yeah, so you've got your speaker symbol right there. This is where it would uh, connect to the motherboard because there's actually not a connector on here. Uh, this does have a mounting bracket for like the, you know, like to put in one of the slots on the back of the computer, but it doesn't connect into like a PCI or a AGP slot. So you would connect it uh, using this right here. But uh, yeah, pretty neat. And like I said, I mean, pretty much anything in here is uh, is definitely possible for a future video project if I can come up with something that I can use it for. But it's always good to have, I mean, with what I do on this channel, it's always good to have just a, you know, plethora of old PC cards and CD drives and CPUs and just all sorts of stuff because you never know when you're going to need something for a future video. So guys, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.